Love set you going like a fat gold watch. The midwife slapped your foot soles and your bald cry took its place among the elements. Our voices echo, magnifying your arrival. New statue. In a drafty museum, your nakedness shadows our safety. We stand round blankly as walls. I'm no more your mother than the cloud that distills a mirror to reflect its own slow effacement at the wind's hands. All night your moth breath flickers among the flat pink roses. I wait to listen. A far sea moves in my ear. One cry and I stumble from bed, cow heavy and floral in my Victorian nightgown. Your mouth opens clean as a cat's. The window square whitens and swallows its dull stars. And now you try your handful of notes. The clear vowels rise like balloons. In this poem, the persona presents some ambivalent feelings about the birth of her baby. There is a sense she feels overwhelmed and stunned by this new arrival, resulting in some unexpectedly aloof imagery about her baby and her own relationship with him or her. However, the poem also shows instinctive maternal care and over the course of the poem, there appears to be a shift from some detachment to an appreciation of the baby's beauty and potential. The first line of this poem contains a much discussed and debated simile, love set you going like a fat gold watch. On one level, it seems to point out that the process that leads to childbirth is typically triggered by love and some fruitful sexual intercourse. However, the fat gold watch image is frankly odd. The reference to the watch may point to time and the beginning of a child's life. Whilst there is no doubt that fat gold watches are valuable, nonetheless, the image points to a separation, a detachment between the mother and child. Yes, it is precious, but ultimately this watch is not a part of her and doesn't have to be worn the whole time. So the simile in line one may be odd, but it's worth pointing out the conversational, nearly intimate tone created by the regular addresses to the newborn, as seen in the use of the second person. But as ever, the exact attitude of the mother towards the child is difficult to discern. For instance, the suggestion of the cry taking its place among the elements is a rather beautiful one, showing an awareness of the tiny vulnerability of her child coming into a huge uncertain world. But the adjective bull next to cry paints an unflattering picture of the sounds her baby is making. The cry is unattractively primal and loud. In many ways, the metaphor of a new statue is similar to the simile about the fat gold watch. Both images highlight the value and impressive physical appearance of the newborn, whilst also suggesting that the mother may not yet have mentally adjusted to having this permanent new figure in her life. Appropriately, given the mother's ambivalent feelings, the metaphor new statue is put into its own separate sentence following a caesura. This highlights the fact that full integration between mother and child has not yet occurred. Of course, becoming a new parent can feel threatening and overwhelming, hence the suggestion that, that the baby's nakedness shadows our safety. Such clear vulnerability and dependence is likely to require a change in mentality, at least to the mother's life, something she is clearly still coming to terms with, hence the blank as walls standing around. With these lines, Plath once again distanced herself from her newborn baby, as seen previously in her apparent distaste for its bald cry, and in the detached, albeit awed, suggestion that it symbolises a new statue. She claims that she is no more your mother than the cloud that distills a mirror. This confirms that she's still coming to terms with her role as a mother. She's not yet ready to embrace this new role. And there is also a sense that she feels she will be supplanted by her child. If the cloud represents herself and the mirror her child, the mirror image is appropriate given their physical genetic similarities. It is clear that she recognises that over time she will be naturally 
at the wind's hand of faced or die. Yet perhaps this process is not quite as grim as I made it out to be. The, the effacement is at the wind's hand, a gentle, soothing image. Statue or no statue, this mother's maternal instincts have clearly kicked in. She listens out carefully for her child's breathing, all too aware of its newborn fragility. The sound she hears when listening for her baby's breathing is a far sea. Again, we have a soothing natural image with tides, breaths rolling in and out as inevitable as the universe itself. Is there a sense that some of the mother's feelings of displacement are due to the changes to her body that have occurred during and post-pregnancy? She is cow heavy, an ugly image, which may suggest that she feels fat and functional. The mother is cow heavy and the newborn's mouth opens clean as a cat's, another rather unattractive image. Again, this image suggests that she may not have mentally made the complete shift to fully embrace the humanity of this new, wondrous, beautiful dependence. After some more ambivalent imagery, the last two images are more positive, suggesting that the mother may now be ready to love her child without reservations or distance. The child tries his or her handful of notes. A beautiful image suggesting a wondrous first production of harmonious sounds. And in the final line, the child's clear vowels rise like balloons, suggesting optimistic, innocent hope. At the start of their new life, embracing the extraordinary world they have just entered is right and natural. They should be reaching for the stars. Your turn, dear chums and Gordon. Consolidate your understanding of this poem by writing topic sentences and quotations for a question asking you to explore how Morning Song presents someone describing their feelings directly to the other person. Press pause now. For my first topic sentence, I might begin by stating that the persona uses imagery to reference some feelings of detachment whilst addressing her baby. I would back this up by exploring the short quotation, new statue in a drafty museum. In another paragraph, I would change direction and point out that nonetheless, the persona describes her instinctive urges to nurture and care for her child's. I would then reference the quotation, one cry, and I stumble from bed cow heavy. Finally, I would explore the fact that the persona recognises the beauty of her child being awoken to the world and describes it using imagery. This would lead me on to exploring this lovely simile, the clear vowels rise like balloons. Here's my model paragraph. The persona uses imagery to reference some feelings of detachment whilst addressing her baby. Within stanza two, she addresses her as new statue present within a drafty museum. Statues are immobile figures, usually from history, that we stand back and admire, rather than have an intimate connection with. On the one hand, the persona is suggesting that she may not yet be fully comfortable with giving her all to nurture and cuddle. Yet this image may also suggest a sense of wonder and awe. This new arrival is so perfectly formed that it needs to be looked at with wonder and considered deeply. The adjective drafty gives an impression of a room in which there is plenty of space and air, a place where, in comparison to all else, the statue can baby looks particularly small and vulnerable. <laughs> 